On a tous d'Hawaï une vision paradisiaque. L'océan Pacifique et la douce brise du large. Ces montagnes volcaniques. Ces couchers de soleil. Ces belles moyennées. Et bien sûr, le surf n'en finissent pas de nous fasciner. Molokai est la moins peuplée et la plus sauvage des grandes îles de l'archipel. On la surnomme l'île amicale, mais les Hawaïens préfèrent dire d'elle qu'elle est la plus hawaïenne des îles hawaïennes. Si la beauté et la sensualité de ces îles hantent notre imaginaire collectif, il ne faut pas oublier que pour certains, elles sont tout sauf un paradis. Tout le long de la côte nord de Molokai, comme un rempart face au Pacifique, se dressent d'impressionnantes falaises maritimes. Ce sont les plus hautes du monde, avec un dénivelé qui atteint par endroits plus de 1000 mètres. Coupée du reste de l'île et entourée par l'océan, la petite péninsule de Kalaopapa avait toutes les qualités pour créer un alcatraz tropical, les gardiens au moins. C'est à cet endroit isolé qu'à partir de 1866 et pendant plus d'un siècle, des milliers de victimes de la maladie d'Hansen, autrement dit la lèpre, vont être déportées. À l'opposé de Kalaopapa, toute l'activité est aujourd'hui concentrée à Konakakai. Deux supérettes, un drive-in, une poignée de boutiques réparties des deux côtés de la rue principale, et c'est à peu près tout. Un adage local dit que si vous ne trouvez pas là ce que vous cherchez, c'est sans doute que vous n'en avez pas besoin sur l'île. Il y a bien un feu rouge, mais personne n'a jamais pris la peine de le brancher. Ils sont comme ça, les habitants de Molokai. Ils n'aiment pas trop les règles et ils tiennent à préserver leur mode de vie, paisible. Tous les samedis après-midi, pendant que certains sont à la pêche, D'autres viennent soutenir l'équipe de baseball du lycée. Et aujourd'hui, les farmers, les fermiers, prennent le dessus sur leurs adversaires pour le plus grand plaisir des spectateurs. Tout le monde à Molokai connaît Buzzy Sprout. Oncle Buzzy, comme l'appellent avec respect les habitants de l'île. Il faut dire que, outre sa voix rocailleuse, le bonhomme est facile à repérer. D'abord à cause du chapeau noir de cow-boy qu'il porte jour et nuit, dehors comme dedans. Et puis il y a la barbe blanche parfaitement entretenu. Depuis plus de 35 ans, Buzzy gère le Molokai Mule Ride. Il offre la possibilité à des groupes de visiteurs de descendre à dos de mule 
le long de la piste historique de Kalaopapa, unique voie d'accès terrestre entre la colonie de Lépreux et le reste de l'île. This time of year it is, uh, is, you know, it rains a lot and, and the rain loosens up rocks and they fall, you know, slide on the trail and then, then a big wind and blow trees down and then we have to go clean up the trees, and cut them off and, and clear it all up. You know, people, We don't want them to get brushed off, so I got to go over there and clean all that off. And, and so I go. I like to go down there and do that. So. The trail was built in 1887. And It was built to haul uh, supplies back and forth to the colony. The airfield was put in in 1940 or something like that. But before that, there was no way in except by that trail. And they hauled, uh, so they hauled all the, earth, all the supplies in. And there's a guy that, when I got there, down there, and I was taking people down, this guy come to see me, and he was still living there. And he was one of the guys that used to take things back and forth, like film, you know, for movies and and they and they pour in or the food and stuff and all that. He all he went back and forth on the mules, but he couldn't come back by the gate up there. Right at the top, there was a gate, just right up to the gate, and the people give him, you give him the hand him the things, and then they take it back to the colony. <laughs> Le Molokai Mule Ride est une entreprise familiale et décontractée. Dès le lever du soleil, tout le monde est là pour préparer les mules de la journée. Les sprouts et les mules, c'est une histoire qui dure depuis trois générations. À sa manière, Buzzy perpétue la tradition locale des Pagnolos. The first cowboys we knew were of Spanish descent. The Hawaiians just took that and made a Hawaiian word out of it, Pagnolo, you know, taken from the word Espagnol. We had cattle and we used horses, but my mule, but because we were up in the mountains, the mules were better than the horses. So we rode mules and We were cowboys on mules. <laughs> okay, now I want me to show you. Uh, this is the, my dad, just before he retired, and this is the water that they ran to irrigate all the cane fields. This is my cousin, and he's hauling some things on the trail there to fix the trail. 
It started with my, my grandfather. At one time, Missouri, the state of Missouri, was the mule capital of the world. And they had a lot of mules over there. And, and uh, my grandfather, he just grew up working on mules in, in Missouri back home. And then, so when he was a young boy, he went to uh, San Francisco, and then he got signed up and came to Hawaii. Well, when he came to Hawaii, he knew about mules, and so they hired him as a superintendent for Koala Ditch Company, where they ran irrigation water out of the mountains, and they used mules to ride in. And so he was a mule man, and so he became the superintendent. Then when my father, when he retired, my father took his place. Then when my father retired, my brother took his place. So we just been muling around for all these years, yeah. People always ask me and I said, I was born a cowboy. So we grew up knowing those things because my father knew about it and he told us about it. Well, my first recollection of riding a mule is riding in front of someone, going down a trail, looking between those ears. And you know a lot of mules, when they walk, their ears go back and forth like that, and they got big ears, huh? and just looking down between their ears is the first, first recollection of riding on a mule. A lot of people own horses, and. People get mad when I tell them these mules are smart, but I tell you, you never know until you work around them how smart they are. And they get their brains from the donkey. The donkey, they, they don't want to do anything that are going to hurt themselves. And they, they don't have suicidal tendencies. They're not going to jump off the cliff. They're not going to do all those things. And, but the horses got to learn these things, you know, got to watch out, they don't fall off and do like that. And then sometimes if you scare a horse and he gets scared, he jump off, you know what I mean? He just turn around and jump. But now the mules, they're always looking out. They don't want to fall off and they don't want to fall down. That's for sure, yeah. Mules, uh, they're trying you all the time, they're like children, you know. They try you all the time, see how much they can get away with. And, and if you let them get away with it, then they're the boss and not you. Au fil des décennies, la descente à dos de mule est devenue la première attraction de l'île. Elle attire des touristes qui viennent des quatre coins des États-Unis. Well, they enjoy going down to the colony because not very many people go down there, you know. Not too often you visit a, a colony, you know, a leper colony, find out the history, you know, of what happened and, and find out what, how, they, how this thing got started, you know, the colony did. Oh, everybody again. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just put a hold on it this morning? Okay. okay. Can you folks fill out one inch of this, please? Okay. I can do it. Okay, that's Robert and Linda. Okay, this place we're going today is called Kalao Papa, known as the Leper Colony. Now at the Leper Colony, there's 20, 21. Last week just had one, another one just died. There's 21 more people with leprosy that still lives there, okay? Patients do stay in their house when the tour goes on, but you know, once in a while you see people, some of them come out. Now if you do see a patient, do not snap their pictures, because that's a $500 fine to you and you get thrown in jail. Do not snap the pictures, okay? People always ask, oh, how do you, uh, 
match people up to the mules. What we do is we usually look at you, and if you look like the mule, we put you on. No, nah, no, nah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why, you see us resemblance here? <laughs> okay, so as you go down the trail, the mule's going to be stepping down all the time. So what we want you to do is just, when you step down, just sit back, push forward with your legs, push your heels down, and, and then, so you don't come forward, you know, you don't want to ride up here. I know, because I rode up there a few times. As soon as you drop the reins like that, Straight to the grass, you see that? And so what you do is you leave, leave the reins on the saddle horn right here like this, and then as you ride along, you're gonna be holding the saddle horn, then what you're gonna tell you is, if you wanna go right, you just reach down and pull right. Wanna go left, you pull left. One stops, you whoop. When you say whoop, then you let go, otherwise you start backing up. And we're gonna wait till this go by, and then we're gonna load you up now. We should load you up now and go in the nice sunshine. If it's sunshine, this is, I don't know who brought this rain. Nobody from Washington. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Bro, your meal's name is Tita. Tita. T I T A. Tita means blind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Tita means sister, okay? And you just hang on right there. Hang okay? on for my dear life. That's it. And just right along. You drop anything on the trail, you let the guys know they'll pick it up for you. West Virginia. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Okay, you go down the trail, you going to be stepping down. Just sit back and fall into your legs, okay? Yeah. Put your leg forward and we put your Yeah, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When we, have you ridden before? No. Okay, let, me, let me look at this. Could you check her stirrups? Nobody looked at her stirrups. Yeah, I think. Remember your mule's name? Lahi Lahi. Lahi Lahi. And it means you know cliff jumper. And no. All right. Quand tout le monde est prêt, la colonne se met en branle et s'engage sur la piste à la seule vitesse que les mules connaissent, c'est-à-dire doucement. Nobody talked about it, you know. 
Uh, later on, you know, as you grow all older, you find out that, you know, there was a leper colony and everything. And, and uh, I thought I didn't know anybody down there, but when I come here and I started going down, I found out that we had some relatives down there that, that were that stayed, you know, were down there. And I went to school with some of the boys that uh, was my cousin, in fact, and his, his mom was down there. Les maladies ont des histoires. Celle de la lèpre n'est qu'une suite pénible d'humiliations et de violences infligées à ceux qu'elle frappait. Dans les premiers temps, il n'y avait sur la péninsule aucun bâtiment, aucun abri ni eau potable. Les premiers malades étaient littéralement abandonnés à leur sort. Par semaine, sur 14 nouveaux arrivants, 5 mouraient. Avec l'arrivée d'un missionnaire belge, le père Damien de Vester, les choses vont changer. Tout entier dédié à la cause des malades, le père Damien va construire un système d'adduction d'eau, des maisons, des églises, mais aussi garantir les financements et l'approvisionnement de la nouvelle léproserie. Après 16 ans de bons et loyaux services, le père Damien va finir par contracter lui-même la maladie et en mourir en 1889. Rode the mule in. So they want to travel by mule. Right now, I'll be taking all of you to where the original settlement was located, called Kalawal, where all of these patients got thrown off by boats and had to swim to shore to make life here. Where Father Damon did all of his work, where they filmed Jurassic Park 2 and 3, and where we have the highest sea cliffs in the world. La léproserie va survivre à la mort du père belge. À partir des années 60, l'utilisation des sulfones va permettre de faire régresser la lèpre. Les malades de Kalaopapa ne seront plus contagieux. La colonie a été classée en parc national historique en 1981. 
Les anciens malades ont eu ensuite la liberté de vivre où bon leur semblait. Certains ont néanmoins décidé de rester à Kalaopapa. C'est le cas de Clarence Bougui Kailiwa qui gère la petite librairie de la colonie. À 68 ans, Bougui est un des plus jeunes de la communauté d'anciens malades. I came here in 1939. Aujourd'hui, ils ne sont plus qu'une vingtaine. Les plus atteints par la maladie se sentent dans la peau d'animaux de foire et évitent tout contact avec les touristes. Ils attendent généralement que le bus soit passé pour sortir de chez eux. As you saw the gentleman in the local bookstore here, he's one of the former patients still remaining in the settlement. Like I said, every, everything is already taken care of by the Department of Health by the state. You got to understand that these former patients do travel till today. They do travel to the neighbor islands as well as the mainland for special gatherings, baby luau's, graduation parties, family reunions, and they always come back here to Kala Papa, which they call home. A couple of times I heard the tourists ask the guide, the guide of today that we're driving this young boy, and the tourist said, well, Uh, I guess the pain comes from the fingers falling off, you know. That's how ignorant, or I would say, that's how uh, illiterate these guys are. You know, they think your nose fall off or your eyes fall off. No, oh, your fingers, it's just that your nerves, it shrinks down. And so when, when I heard that, I kind of chuckled and I, I said, hey, sir, I say, if you want to know what is pain, it's not that. Pain is the separation of family. You separate from your mom and dad, your, your sisters and brothers, that's pain. De l'ancienne léproserie, il ne reste que l'église fondée par le père Damien, Saint Philomène. Les tempêtes tropicales et les incendies ont eu raison des autres bâtiments.
C'est à cet endroit que, suite à sa béatification, la relique de sa main droite est enterrée. Les touristes en apprennent finalement peu sur l'histoire et les habitants du lieu. La visite se résume à un pèlerinage sur les traces du bon père. Depuis 2003, Bougui milite au sein de Kaohana au Kalaopapa une association destinée à perpétuer l'histoire et la mémoire de tous ceux qui ont été exilés sur la péninsule. Ohana est une famille. Ohana, c'est une famille. Donc, nous l'avons appelé. Notre groupe est un non-profit. C'est plus comme un advocate pour ceux qui ne peuvent pas parler pour eux-mêmes. Et juste pour voir que tout est... Hongidari, in other words, you know, so long that the, <clears throat> the state or the national park is not going, doing things without us, without informing us, you know. Uh, that was more so for, to gather the names of the families and uh, the past, we're talking about the past, and uh, that's the most important, that was our mission. Uh, to be an advocate, you know, of this thing. What I'm afraid of, that when we're gone, there's no restriction. There no need to be any restriction here. Yeah, there, there won't be any patients, anything. But <clears throat> the Kawana is one of those that we like to see something uh, Preserve, you know, something like a memorial. Ce que les touristes n'auront pas vu, c'est le village de Kalaopapa tel qu'il est vraiment. Il y règne une ambiance particulière. Le temps semble suspendu. On y croise peu de monde et on a l'étrange impression de déambuler dans un village que ses habitants auraient fui précipitamment. Il y a bien une douzaine de petites routes, mais aucune d'entre elles ne mène quelque part.
À Calao Papa, il n'y a pas de restaurant, pas de cinéma ni de transat sur la plage. Le surf est interdit. pour la vingtaine d'anciens patients, on compte plus de 90 employés des services de santé de l'État d'Hawaï et du Parc national. Le fait que tous les habitants soient appelés « patients » et l'obsession presque maladive concernant les interdits et autres règlements brouille les frontières entre village, hôpital et prison. This building here used to be for the blinds, uh, mostly of the handicaps. Well, we used to like, get a lot of, you know, we used to go swimming, diving, fishing. Some of the boys were hunting, you know. There's a lot of things you can do. But if you just go in, be grumpy and everything, you get nothing. Yeah. I guess you gotta accept what's around you and make use of it and be a part of it. We made a life here. There was nothing else you could do but make a life. No sense be sorry for yourself. A Japanese uh, cemetery right here. There's the most recently died was buried. Right up there is my sister and my uh, my brother is right next and. Uh, On the shores of Kalau Papa, we stand with heads bent low, shut away by high barrier cliffs. We recall our own vanished island. Farewell, farewell, beloved home. Never shall we see thee no more. Constantly we implore God to lift this affliction laid upon us.
You know, it's almost like a big family over here. You know what's happening to the next person, and you try to help when somebody dies, that's part of you died. Quand un patient meurt, sa maison n'est pas réoccupée. Aussi, la nature reprend doucement ses droits sur les bâtiments les plus vieux. Having this disease doesn't mean that uh, you're not a human. You're still a human. Uh, but I guess in a way back to him, Father Damien's time, they look as uh, they look down on the on the person who has leprosy, and you're stuck with that stigma as being a, a leper. People need to be educated about this. You'd be surprised how many people in Hawaii over here on this island on top side Molokai. Some of them don't know where is this. They haven't been down here for all their life. That's it. L'accès à la colonie est toujours très contingenté, limité à 100 visiteurs par jour et interdit au moins de 16 ans. À Kalaopapa, il n'y a pas d'école parce qu'il n'y a pas d'enfants. Now is the time for the children to come. We are the living legacy. You know, we can we can tell them straight first hand all the questions they want to know. What not only reading for the book When we're gone, you're going to have people maybe from Wisconsin, from the National Park, from Oklahoma, or whatever they come down there and they don't know beans about Hawaiian ways of living. À Kalao Papa, une page d'histoire est en train de se tourner. La prochaine canonisation du père Damien va attirer sur la péninsule de nouveaux pèlerins des quatre coins de la planète. Pour Buzzy, c'est l'assurance de voir le Molokai New Ride perdurer. Wear out the shoes real fast. Seven weeks.
Just grew up, grew up around them, watching people shoe. School of hard knocks. Colors is black and blue. That means that means you're getting hit and gonk on the head and all of that and you what happened when you get hit? It turns black and blue, right? Hmm? Or, or is that only only Americans say that? Black and blue. That will come out. Come out. Yep. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi, baby. I always tell, tell my kids and stuff like that. I says, you know, when you have a job to do it, do the best you can do. You have to do it. Don't, don't just, you know, do it half, you know, and try to get away with not doing things, you know, not working. My dad used to say all the time, he says, even if it is shoveling manure, be the best manure shoveler. À 71 ans passés, le bonhomme n'a aucune intention de prendre sa retraite. You gotta do something all your life, you know what I mean? As long as you can keep going, because if you retire, you know we had mules before that got old, and my my dad says, "Oh, let's retire this mule because the poor guy he's been working all these years, and we retire him and in a few months he's dead." And so, as same as human beings, you know. If you're going to retire, first thing you do is sit down and do nothing, and that's it. Hey, miss my rope. Miss my slack. Si un jour votre chemin vous amène du côté de Molokai, vous trouverez toujours un membre de la famille Sprout pour vous descendre le long de la piste de Kalaupapa. Papa.